Hey everybody, welcome back to Ceramic Chef's YouTube channel. Today we're going to be doing pizza on the grill dome. Uh, start off with, we're going to make the dough here. And this is a different recipe than I normally post on the grill dome forums. This one, the ingredients are a little easier to find and the dough is actually a little bit easier to work with. Um, I don't think the flavor is quite as good, um, but overall it's actually a great dough recipe, um, especially for your first time making pizza. I'm going to start out with six cups of frozen bread flour. And the flour doesn't actually freeze, obviously, but uh, put it in a container or something and stick it in the freezer for about an hour to get it good and cold. And you'll notice throughout this recipe that it is always mentioning everything to be cold. This is a cold fermented pizza dough so it doesn't have to rise or anything, um, but if it gets too warm then the yeast will activate and it'll, it'll ruin the recipe. So start out with everything cold. Alright, so now that the olive oil is in, we get the mixer started just nice and easy and start slowly adding the water. You don't want to add the water too fast or else it can gum stuff up. Uh, so we'll just do a little bit at a time while the dough hooks going around mixing it all together. So on this one I actually ended up adding a little more than two cups of water. Um, the main thing isn't as much how much water you add, but just looking for the right consistency. So what you'll see once the mixer stops is that it's a little bit sticky, but it pulls away cleanly from the dough hook, and that's what you're looking for. So once that's done, we're going to drizzle some olive oil on it, uh, and then we'll just cover it up, and it's going to go in the fridge for about 25 or 30 minutes. All right, while the dough's getting cold, we'll get the grill ready. Um, just stirring up the old ashes a little bit here, and I put our igniter in, and then I'm going to put some fresh lump on top of that. Uh, today I'm using the big green uh, egg lump, you'll notice. Uh, normally I'm a Royal Oak guy, um, just because it's cheap and it's readily available, but unfortunately, uh, when I went to buy some the other day, they were out, so I had to go to a, a specialty shop and buy the big green egg lump. Still good charcoal, it's just more expensive than the Royal Oak that I normally use. Alright, we're going to plug in the igniter and we'll let it sit and be back in a few. Alright, this is about six minutes later. You can see we've got a really good fire going. So I'm grabbing the upper decker rack here. I'm going to put that in the up position. Uh, we don't need the main grate or anything on this one, so we'll just go with the upper decker rack. And then we're going to put the pizza stone directly on top of that. Close it all up. And I set the top damper about half open at this point, and the bottom damper also about half open. I want it to come up to temperature nice and easily, nice and slow. Alright, back inside here, get the pizza going. I'm going to start with parchment paper. This is something that I use all the time. I find this really makes it a lot easier. 
uh, to get your pizzas on and off the grill, which you'll see later. So we're going to spread that out on the cutting board uh, and then throw a piece of dough on there and get it rolled out. Alright, once the dough is all spread out, we're going to grab a fork and poke holes throughout it. That prevents air bubbles from forming during the baking of the pizza and it'll keep the crust nice and flat. You don't have to get it real, real dense, but, you know, just enough of them that uh, that air can escape if it does start to form. And then we're doing a white pizza here first, so the sauce is basically just going to be olive oil. We're going to spread that out and then we're going to come back in with some finely chopped garlic and spread that around. Next is just some leaf spinach, and you can put as much or as little of that on here as you want. Uh, you'll see I'll do this a couple times, get a pretty good bit of spinach. Now I always do my cheeses last, so we're going to come in with some mozzarella here and put that on, and then a little bit of goat cheese, and that pretty much just seals everything in and helps the toppings stay on the pizza. Alright, now our last step before we go to the grill is going to be to cut out the excess parchment paper. I learned this the hard way. Um, if you have any parchment paper that's hanging over the stone, it can actually catch on fire and burn, and the smoke is really bad. Uh, I've had it ruin pizzas before, so you don't have to get too close to the pizza, but as close as you can. Uh, the main thing is to make sure that your parchment paper is smaller than the, uh, the size of your pizza stone. Alright, we're back outside. You can see at this point I've actually got the top vent opened all the way up. 
the bottom vent's open to about three quarters, and that's what gets me that 550 uh, temperature I'm looking at. This one's a little hotter. We're almost to 600, um, but that should be fine. We're just going to keep a close eye on the pizza. You can see with the parchment paper, it slides on real easily, so just close it up and start watching. So you see, looking through the top vent's a real good way to kind of spy on your pizza without opening the lid up. The cheese is melting real well, and uh, this one's about ready. So we're going to open it up and check the crust. Yeah, it's starting to brown pretty good. I think this needs about another minute or two. So we come back two minutes later, and we're ready to pull it off. I always pull it off on a wooden, wooden cutting board. Um, I've had plastic ones kind of warp on me a little bit, but uh, the wooden one works great. So just to show you one other uh, pizza here, this is a uh, Supreme pizza that we made up, and half of it's commercial mozzarella like you saw in the last pizza, and the other half is homemade mozzarella that I just finished up. So this was my first attempt at doing a pizza with the homemade mozzarella. Uh, and you can see the grill's pretty hot there, but I want to get it lined up just right. Alrighty, now this guy's ready to go too. You can see my homemade mozzarella didn't melt quite as well as I had wanted it to, but overall it still worked out pretty well. And that's it. Thanks for spending some time with me today. Sorry this video went a little long, but uh, hopefully you learned something, and uh, you'll be making some great pizzas on your grill dome before long.